the cost of producing a pot of jollof rice for a family of five, that's the average family size according to the National Bureau of Statistics, is calculated using the prices of this ingredient and then used as proxy to gauge food inflation across the country. So the cost of rice, curry, thyme, seasoning, groundnuts, oil, turkey or chicken, beef, pepper, tomatoes, salt and onions. They are the commodities that make up that pot of jollof rice that you enjoy. And we're using that to discuss inflation index at this time. We have Gloria Tim, she's analyst at SBM Intelligence. She carried out this research and uh, she joins us now to tell us, hi Gloria, you must like jollof rice a lot. Yes, I do. And um, <laughs> most Nigerians like jollof rice, just like me. Okay. So is that why you used it as a, a measurement? So tell us about your findings. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we found out was that in this quarter, the cost of making a pot of jollof rice has increased by 7.3% from um, last October. And um, a lot of um, a lot of geopolitical issues are, are concerned or are, are the reasons for these. So, for instance, in the southeast, um, the city at home also impacted the cost of food. And um, in the north or and places like the FCT, insecurity is still a major issue there that's, um, that's causing the cost of um, jollof rice to increase. Other issues around include um, storage issues, food wastages, and a number of those. All right, so we do know that with the increase in, in prices, there are compromises by consumers. What are some of those compromises and how does it affect, uh, of course, we have the, the issue of uh, nutrients that is needed for the body. And, you know, and of course, when you don't have the right nutrients, you're talking of a, 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 a threat to good health. So what are the compromises that some consumers have been making and what is the cost of that compromise that they are making? One of them is that Nigerians are abandoning quality for quantity. So in the course of our research, we found out that um, people were not so much concerned with the quality of what they are eating. What they're concerned about is, you know, the quantity. They just want to feed. They just want to eat. It's not like, um, it's not like okay, I, I want turkey. I want this. In fact, one of the people we quoted in the report said she had long ago removed turkey from her, her list of protein. And, you know, she'd moved to chicken and then she'd moved to um, fish. And she has even moved to egg. And the, and the cost of egg has also increased. So exactly. Customers, are, yes. So they're, they're, they're kind of, you know, running out of alternatives. Mm. So this uh, is just one way that the NBS measures inflation. Uh, and this has been a conversation that has been ongoing. The basket of commodities used to measure inflation. Uh, do you see the inflation figures, you know, as a tr capturing the realities of our time, you know? Or do you think there's a need to rejig that basket, the content of that basket that is used to capture inflation? I think that um, the baskets that are used in measuring inflation are not, they are not arbitrary baskets. So um, they are definite measures and these are measures that, um, that are in line with some of, the, um, some of the measures that Nigerians use. To, to buy food, sort of, sort of um, Derika and all of that. So I feel like the measures are like the measures are sufficient and they are they are good enough. And why we have um, the the SBM um, Jollof index and the, and and the way we measure it is because we want to see the real changes, you know, month by month. We want to see um, what food ingredient changed, and you know, it's more relatable. And it's, it's more like um, what the average Nigerian feels. The issue of uh, a food import bill, uh, which the CBN says has risen by 45%. Uh, how much of this content of this pot of jollof uh, contributes to this food import bill? Okay, so um, one of the things that has risen 
is uh, protein, like um, sources of protein. And, um, you know, in our Jollof index, we have um, turkey, we have, um, we have chicken, and we have, we have beef. So um, this, this sources of protein has, has really increased. And um, apart from that, you know, the alternatives that people are now using, like, like the air too, has really gone up. So um, that's, that's like it. So now, what from your perspective stops Nigeria from, I mean, why can't we have our own poultry, our own protein? What stops us? Even when we talk about the rice, you go to a lot of homes today, you still see the imported rice. And yet the government has been talking about homegrown rice, local rice available. We've had in different states, different initiatives. What from your findings is stopping Nigerians from really looking inwards for these staple, staple foods that, that we actually need? Okay, one of that is insecurity. You know, um, there's so much insecurity in the north and arable lands are no longer cultivated. Apart from that, we have to move away from um, just supporting smallholder farmers, which is like um, the policy initiative of the government. We have to move to mechanized agriculture. We have a population that is growing at 2.5. So, you know, smallholder farmers cannot catch up with that um, population. Rate. So we have to look at, you know, try mechanizing agriculture, making food available at large quantities like it is in other countries. Apart from that, we, we also have to, you know, improve on our storage, you know, our storage facilities. Some of the items that are of food produce that we eventually make are wasted. And they are wasted as a result of the lack of storage. So those are the things that the government should consider away from, you know, their, their policies of um, supporting smallholder farmers. What about individuals? So we're, we're not leaving everything at the doorstep of the government. What about, you know, private investors? Are they doing enough when we talk about storage, preservation, logistics? Are, are, are the, private, the private sector, is the private sector doing enough, you know, to develop these areas? I would say that um, we don't have a, a lot of private sector investment in this area. And I, I think the government shares the blame because, you know, when there's a need for a thing like that, what you do is that you, you incentivize people to take up that, um, those kind of, um, um, you know, ventures. So I, I don't think there's a lot of in, in incentives for people to, to take up storage um, businesses in Nigeria. So for instance, if, if you look at, um, for, I'm, I'm talking about the level of the individual now. So if you look at what most individuals use in storage, it's refrigerators. And you, you can see what's happened in, in like the last month in terms of um, the cost of diesel, the cost of um, fuel, fuel scarcity and all of that. So, you know, the, the, Private individuals need to be incentivized to be able to go into these businesses. All right, uh, Glory, thank you so much. Glory Tim is analyst with SBM Intelligence, and she did that research on the cost of a pot of jello fries. Thank you so much for your time on the show this morning. Thank you.